Hey guys, Dead Jester Gaming, and I am back with part, what is this now, four? Okay, wow, this series is actually way longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I fully expected the series to be, you know, maybe f three, four episodes, but I, I severely underestimated this. This might be like a 20 or a 30 part, for all I know. Uh, either way, I am back. Uh, this video is being recorded, I think, two days early because I had a lot of stuff to come up. Monday and Tuesday, personal business, don't worry about it. Either way, I'm here now, gonna record this, and this time I will definitely try, I will try my best to make this one 20 minutes, I swear. I am not putting another annotation that says, whoops, in a video if I can help it, aside from, like, maybe tomorrow, or, well, I guess yesterday's video for you guys, but that's beside the point. Right now, we're gonna do this up, we're gonna get in here. So... No, I actually kind of have to remember where I was at. If I remember correct, it was something about finding a bus and getting the hell out of Dodge, basically. And I didn't think that we were going to be sleeping on the streets tonight, but uh, there's a chance that we might be. So, yeah, I think our best bet, though, is just to get to the bus station and see where that takes us. So, yeah, that's where we are going to go. And if it's too long of a walk, I'll just cut it out. But, yeah, this is a part that we haven't actually seen in the city because it was previously filled with uh, Tutorialium. Tutorialium? Still can't pronounce that right. I don't think there is any way to pronounce it right. Who are you? You seem not muggish. I really want to hope there's some good news in tomorrow's issue of the Daily News Times. Yeah, if I remember correct, I specifically set it up so that people would hopefully get mad at that movie theater because they were about to do something very, very heinous. They were about to knock down the building where a lot of homeless older people are living in. So, yeah, here's the bus. So, I wrote it so that people would get mad. So, and here is when we get the hell out of Dodge. We have got to get to San Fernando. We've got to go find, I think her name was Ginger Fuck. And we've got to go tell her that she's making a horrible, horrible life decision and that she'd be, she should be with us, the nobodies, the drifters, who can't even get a single book published in, like, a year. So, we've got some arguing to do here, but we're going to see what happens. Let's just go on this fucking crazy adventure, alright? Where would you like to go today? Dubs down to beaten. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, guys, sans that idea, I gotta go work some more. So, I think I'm sleeping on the street tonight. Whoopty fucking do. <laughs> oh, God. I remember a poster about this dog, something about that. I'm, I'm gonna go steal that dirty mackerel. This guy shouldn't be awake. And even if he is, I don't get, I don't get shit. Let's steal his mackerel starving. Maybe I'll find some food in here. Can't do it. I'll try to find another way to fill my belly. What? Oh. Uh, yeah, I forgot. I had the wrong button there. So, yeah. Did we find a dirty mackerel? Nope, we didn't find a dirty mackerel yet. I thought I threw it back in here. Come on. Come on. Nothing. 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 Can I get the mackerel from you? I have to fish to eat here and I don't like to share. Well, with that said, um, you know what, I'm going to see if there's some dog food at the grocery store. So, yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, most grocery stores carry dog food, don't they? Like, every, every grocery store around me carries dog food. This looks like dog food right here. Some people like 1%. Some people like whole. My milk of choice has always been chocolate. I actually hate milk. Like, yeah. I... I hate to admit this, I'm actually mildly lactose intolerant, but I, I hate milk. Uh, no, it's not to the point where, like, my throat closes up or anything, no. It's just, it doesn't sit well with me. So, I just try to avoid it aside from ice cream and milkshakes. Those are, and frappes, those are, uh, those are, like, my weak, guilty sin. Yeah, I don't think I can live my life without those. So, aside from that, I don't drink milk. Did you find everything you were looking for? Uh, let's see what we have here. Dog food! 
Okay, I figured it'd be in here. Let's go get a doggy. We're gonna get a doggy, guys. We're gonna get a dog. He's a cute doggy. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. Hey, there, little doggy. How are you doing, girl? Oh, it's a female dog. Yay. Brought you some food. Woof. Ooh. Grr. Had a girl. It's coming a bit closer now. Give up the food. Watch, watch. <laughs> Nomming away happily. Ooh, what is this? Looks like the dogs dropped something. Sure. Looks like the locket the dog was wearing fell off. You picked up the dog's locket. Why was the dog wearing a locket? Well, let's see what this is, guys. It's under items, I would imagine. Maybe it will come in handy. Alright. I have no idea. That's rather strange. So, I don't think I can actually do anything about that. 100 bucks for a random dog I found on the streets, not bad. I've got his phone number, I guess. So, do I call this guy up? I think I have to call him up. Uh, dog wanted. Hello? Is this dog? Yes, this is dog. <laughs> I mean, I've got a dog. <laughs> I've got a dog with me. I'm not a dog. Alright, you want to sell it? I'll give you a hundred bucks. Sure! It's all yours. Where do I meet you? The old cookie factory on Main Street. Knock on the door. Come alone or I won't answer. Should I bring the dog? This white one's been following me around lately. Of course! You dance? <laughs> he hung up. The old cookie factory, eh? Alright. Come here, little doggy. Come on. We're gonna go find you some new owners. Now, I wanna make it clear. If, there, if these guys are, like, sketchy in any way and aren't treating this dog right for whatever reason, this deal ain't going through. Like, I'll bust a cap in somebody's ass. Like, without even thinking. So, yeah. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen. I got a good feeling, but... You, you never really know, so you gotta be careful. Alright, there you are. You're the guy that told me to get the hell away. Nice looking dog. 100 for the mutt, no questions. Deal? Sounds fair. Sounds like a fair deal to me. Alrighty, go say goodbye. Oh. See you, pal. See you, girl. Mira, we got treats for you. Here's your money. Now get lost. Yay. No, Sorry, doggy. I hope they treat her right. I mean, the ad said, like, they're gonna take her to, like, a championship program. I assume this is, like, a, uh, um, shit, why can I not think of the name of it? Like, the... ACPSA competition. You know, you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. All those snooty, hoity-toity uh, dog comps where they like lift up its tail and they walk it around and one dog took a shit one year like halfway through the competition. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. It's on the, um, <clears throat> it's on the animal channel and like four people watch it a year. <laughs> Let's see if I can go in here. Ooh, hospital. Welcome to Dubstown General. Okay, I can't go in. Visiting hours are over for the day. Alright, I can't go in there. Maybe... Maybe I can go up this way? Because I know there was a lot of talk about a lot of old people. Oh, it's locked. Damn it! Am I really sleeping on the street again tonight? God damn it. He was talking about some marketing company. It's too late to do this shit. No, I don't think so. All right, all right, all right. Um, who the hell do I talk to? Uh, you. You look important. Or you look like you're talking to someone important who is currently invisible. Yeah. Jim, I had to let him go. Can't have that kind of ridiculous insubordination in my hands right now. Sorry, we're not taking walk-ins today. If you need something, Bailey should be able to help you. I don't know, Jim. What would you do? Honestly, you should have heard this lunatic. Okay. You seem not crazy. Talking to the wall. I, th I think you're the secretary. I hate this layout. Like, the secretary should be right in front of the door, like, here. 
<laughs> but no, she's all the way back here. Oh, I didn't see you there. If you need something, Bailey. You're not fucking Bailey! He's the fellow with the big mustache over by the photocopier. God damn it. Does nobody wear fucking name tags anymore? Jesus Christ, people. Hey, you must be the kid Larry called us about. Sorry to tell you, but we need someone ASAP and the job's already been filled. Uh, I guess I'll have to find another job then. Thanks for your time. Fuck you. God fucking damn it. Oh well. Find another job. Probably in the morning. Ooh, employment center. Are you still open? Hmm, looks like this place hires just about anyone. Too bad they're closed for a civic holiday. What the hell is Temp Workers Day, anyways? I have no fucking clue. We have too many goddamn holidays anymore. We should eliminate like three. <laughs> Seriously, we have too many holidays. It's, it's getting crazy now. Who are you? Will you mug me? I was king of the city long ago. Now I'm just human garbage. Aren't we all, buddy? I suppose I can sleep here tonight. Well, you know... I do have two mattresses tonight, and over here I'm guarded by the Dirty Macro Thief and the former king. So, and he compares himself to human garbage. So, um, I don't trust my status of not being mugged yet with either of them. So, yeah. I'm just gonna... Oh, his stomach's empty. Just get something to eat before he's sleeping. If I go to... Uh, stay awake. Tired dick face needs food badly. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I get it, I get it. You want me to pay ten freaking bucks for a sandwich? Go. And in we go. Into the fucking bacon bar. Let's see if our stocks have changed any. Current sandwich futures. Damn, not a dime different. All right, let's let's dump all our money on one fucking sandwich here, and I'm not buying the goddamn bacon shake. Alright, that's just... That's just no. Bacon burger. Seems... Seems don't know for me. I mean... 100% bacon with no filler. And so they're the same damn thing. Alright, whatever. I'll buy like two of these. Like, we haven't eaten in a few days, so... Or like one day, so I'd assume we can go for at least a couple of these things. Bacon burger! All right, let's get the hell out of here before we have to spend any more money. Drop 20 bucks on food, like goddamn. I, I'd, I'd go to McDonald's for cheaper than that. Like, not sponsored or promoted by them in any way, but goddamn. Like, motherfucking Taco Bell. Seriously, man. Yeah, let's go to sleep. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to write in your journal every night, so yeah. Yep. Put it in journal page. Well, this looks like my bed for the night. Second night of homelessness. <laughs> We're doing great, people. We're doing great. This guy gonna do for a meal? I'm hungry. Looks like Patrick's paging me. Beep, beep, beep. Message from Patrick. Come to office ASAP. Breaking story. Guess he liked my store on the Sunny Megaplex. I've got more to work. More work at the... Yeah. I've got more work at with at with the Daily News Times. Oh god, alright. Vagabond dogs, I love you guys. But goddamn motherfucking spell check. Seriously guys. Still frame this, tweet it, hashtag it, do whatever the fuck you want. Just yeah. Day three. Alright. Vagabond dogs, I love you guys, but yeah, you missed one. <laughs> I know that feeling. Like, I miss stuff all the time in my videos, but still, man. <laughs> Alright, what do you want? Great work on that story yesterday. As promised, I've got your pay ready. 100 bucks. Hope you don't mind getting paid in cash. It helps keep the man from getting his unfair cut, if you know what I mean. Patrick hands you 100 bucks. You beeped me about something urgent? Another the story? We need someone right away. We received an anonymous tip about a disgruntled worker who was recently fired from the High Rung Ad Agency. He is a notable luminary in the ad world. An interview with him would make excellent human interest story. We need you to go and talk to him and get the facts. We need total coverage. So you want me to go and spend my day with a disgruntled office worker? 
I'm interested, but that doesn't sound particularly safe for me. No need to worry about that. The tip did say something about a box of ammo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But there's been no word on a gun. God damn it. Am I really going to spend the day with a psycho? Jesus Christ. Besides, that's what the danger space for. Get this done and I'll pay you double for this. We even run it on the front page tomorrow. 200, eh? You're lucky I need the money. So where does this guy live? He's at the Regal apartment complex just across the street in apartment 203. Head back there when you're ready and use any of the workstations to type it out. Alright, wish me luck. I'm gonna need all the fucking luck in the world here, people. I am gonna go spend the day with a psycho who had ammo at his desk. <sighs> Jesus Christ, the things I do for cash. You know, at this point, it would probably be safer to be a male prostitute. I'm gonna be honest. I think it's a 203. I think this is the apartment complex. Like, this is the only apartment complex I know of. I, I, don't, I don't think this is it. I'll be, I'll be back, people. Alright, I am back. I think this is the one. Next to the philosophical uh, homeless guy. Yeah, this is it. Ooh. Fancy, fancy. I like the music. Alright, alright. 203, right? One, two, three. Looks like someone's moving out. Alright, can I steal a shit? <laughs> I don't think it's this one. Maybe it's this one? Oh, hello there. You must be the reporter from the Daily News Times. Welcome, please come in. Okay. Yeah, this is the guy from the concert that said he was about to snap. Yeah, I am. How'd you know that? Well, I was the one who left the tip. I have a few things I needed to make public. First, though, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. <clears throat> I don't think that's how an interview usually works, but sure. Have you ever worked to the bone only to find nobody appreciated it? Does a legacy of effort mean anything in this world anymore? <sighs> I really don't want this guy to snap, but yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Of course, but not all appreciated is the soft answer, and nothing lasts forever is almost like a bit slap, so I'm gonna say of course, but not all appreciated. Of course. Truly great work lasts forever, even if it's not appreciated in its time. Hmm, interesting. I guess even Picasso was called crazy back in his day. Picasso chopped off his ear. I mean, crazy is as crazy does. If it walks like a duck and sounds like a duck, it ain't a fucking rose. <laughs> and that's coming from a former art major, people. But Picasso was goddamn crazy. Do you ever feel like people control you? If the best way to keep someone totally complacent is with a kind word and a smile, then how can you ever trust anyone? Well, you do need to trust to survive. It's a scary thing trusting someone else, but without trust, how can we function? You need to have faith in people from time to time to get by. I guess that's true. If we never trusted people's authenticity, it would be very hard to function in a society. If someone wrongs you, can you ever truly look the other way? Can a person learn to accept that sometimes you'll wind up being the prey? You can't let people screw you. I'm gonna be honest. If it's a doggy dog world, then you can't let yourself become a victim. You need to take charge and show them who's boss by whatever means you can. Hmm, that's a harsh truth. I suppose people are just victims and others are just predators. It's the way the world works, I guess. Why are some people so willing to destroy the lives of others just to get ahead with what little they can? What drives someone to sabotage others for success? Well, usually it's being a sociopath. Uh, there's actually a report a while back I read. Most CEOs actually show symptoms of being sociopaths, and it actually helps them get farther in business, unfortunately. And if you guys don't know, like either, either you don't even want to Google what a sociopath is or whatever. It's basically someone who has no conscience. They they are slopalism to the max. They don't think that anyone else matters but them. They feel no empathy. They feel no regret. They feel no remorse. It's them and them alone. It's a it sounds narcissistic, but there's a lot more to it than that as well. Uh, most sociopaths live like normal lives. I mean, but 
still, they just, they'll stab you in the back if you're not close to them. And even then, you have to be careful about it. So, and if they're on medication, that's something completely different. They're handling it and they're controlling it. So, yeah. So I'm going to say, I don't know which answer he wants. If he wants the honest one, or if he wants the um, agreeing with the masses kind of answer. Because the sad truth is, in this world, screwing people over seems to be the way that the American economy is geared. I'm going to give him the harsh truth. Hey, if doing right by everyone got us where we needed to go, there'd be no bad people in the world. You gotta take care of number one first. As I thought. The choice to be selfless is tantamount to weakness. You can't reach your own potential without stepping on toes. When you see wrongs in the world, are you compelled to speak up? Now, I just want to go back a second. I am a very charitable and nice kind of guy. So... Yeah, I just want to throw that out there that I don't routinely screw people over. If anything, I've been the one that's been getting screwed over for a while on some stuff, but it's beside the point for now. So, yeah. Why do some choose to stay quiet and then stay quiet in the face of awfulness while others don't? I'd say self preservation because I know exactly what he's talking about. If we all went up and put ourselves in the line for every little thing we should have, then we'd always be in danger ourselves. Yeah, I suppose. Trying to do the right thing for someone who has their back against the wall can leave you in the firing squad sights too. Have you ever made an assumption that you wish you hadn't made it before? What can we do when our gut feelings are telling us someone has devious thoughts? Damn, these are some hard questions. I hate getting into philosophical debates this late. God damn, do I hate it. It's like a quarter to two, ten to two. But I gotta say, circumstances usually misunderstood. Your gut's usually right. The circumstances are usually misunderstood in a lot of things. Some people get hung up on assumptions, but I've often found that circumstances can frequently be misunderstood. We never see the whole story until the end, right? Ah, I see. As much as our life experience tries to inform us, we can often be misguided by it. We assume out of necessity only. Well, you've given me a lot to think about. I apologize if this was a little bit more if this was more than a little bit unconventional. I hope you got what you needed for your article. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. There's something I need to get done. I'd like to ask him a few questions. I'm not sure I'll be able to write a story out of all that. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions about why I'm here? Of course, please, ask anything you wish. Well, um, ask about the agency. What can you tell me about your time with the High Rung Ad Agency? What kind of business is it? Well, High Rung is an advertising agency. Their business is getting people to buy things they probably don't need. Yeah, I, I was a former graphic design major, and... I can tell you, advertising is almost magic in its own way. It's literally the psychology of telling people you need this in your life or else you won't be able to go on without it. I worked there as the mouth of the organization. Our words persuaded others to feel worse about their lives so they would buy what we were selling. Exactly what I just said. You can only speak lies so long before your life becomes one. Well. What were all those questions about? That was some pretty heavy stuff. Suffice it to say that I've been seeking an answer I don't think that I can find on my own. Questions of this nature often need to be often need different perspectives to solve. Well, who are you? I'm nobody. Nobody special. Come on, there's gotta be something you can say for yourself. Well, you know the boring bits of my biography by now, I'll assume. I guess the only thing I could add is that I see myself as someone who saw the world's awfulness and rejected it to a fault. Well, I guess that's it. I guess that's everything. You know, if you have anything to add or have anything more to say, you can reach me at the paper's office. 
Thank you, dickface. <laughs> I truly appreciate your time. Goodbye. Looks like Jack locked the door. He probably just needs some time alone. That was strange, to say the least. Got a fucking devil on my shoulder seeing if I can peep in this keyhole. I don't think anyone's home. Thank God I did not have to fulfill that temptation to peep in another keyhole. <laughs> After the horrible, awful things I saw last time, I did. Who the hell are you? Hey, the person. Hey, dickface. Shit, I haven't seen you in almost a year. How are things going? It's me, Juliet. From Larry's party? You and Gingerfuck still knocking boots? No. We, uh, broke up. Huh, that's too bad. That book or whatever still coming along? You didn't release it yet, did you? Please tell me you have like a million bucks. I could totally borrow some right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I never finished it. What about you? What are you doing these days? I just picked up some bullshit work doing some copywriting for a soda company or something. It was really dull work until all of this office drama started rearing its ugly head. Some people just can't get along, can they? Anyway, I'm sure you've got stuff to do. I won't keep you any longer. It was really nice catching up. Likewise. Okay. That, that happened. <laughs> Alright, so now we get to run back to the office and type it a type, type, type. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I better get this interview filed if it's gonna be, if it's going to make the papers tomorrow morning. Hmm, where to start? A phone call? For me? Who the hell? Hello? Dickface, it's Jack. I wanted to thank you for stopping by today. You really did give me a lot to think about. I've been on the verge of making a very important decision about my life, and I want to say that you've helped me come to a conclusion. I'm happy knowing someone else there, else out there understands me. Please know that I truly appreciate the new perspective you gave me. I'm going to be leaving Dubstown within the next few days. I wanted to extend the invitation to you. I know you've been looking to leave as well. You don't need to answer now, but I want you to know that you don't need to go it alone. You found a friend in me, and I'm happy to help. It's the least I can do, considering what you've done for me. Thank you, Dickface. Well, uh, thanks, Jack. It was nice talking to you. Likewise. You know where to find me. Looks like I've got a ride out of this town. San Fernando, here I come. Alright, evening three. So, I think I'm going to type this in the next episode because it's going on about 20 minutes here now, I believe. So, if it's not, then so be it. Either way, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Um, like, favorite, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. Um, like, yeah, you guys are awesome. I appreciate every single one of you that watches. So, thank you all again. Have an awesome day, and I will catch you all in the next video.